Hello, my name's Joe Furla. I'm the Insight Head Nerd here at Enable. And today I'd like to talk to you about patching in our tech track. We're gonna take a quick look at one of the items I tend to feel gets forgotten a little bit within the dashboard. So we'll pop over into my RMF. And here we'll take a look at an individual site. We'll right click on our site, come to edit site, and we'll come to the site concentrator tab. This is where we'll be able to assign a server, in this particular case, the 0009 server, a specific port for communication, denote if we'd like to open the Windows firewall, specify a cache path on a particular drive. So in this case, let's go to temp patch, a folder that I'll create on that particular device. Okay. And then we'll be able to enter in any proxy IP, proxy port, or authentication items if necessary. When we go ahead and save this, what we'll be enabling for the devices within the network that that server's on is the ability to call to the server to grab the patch rather than going out to the internet to download that patch individually. What the site concentrator will allow us to do is download the patch once to that server, and then we'll have the server push that patch to the individual devices. A couple quick gotchas here within the site concentrator we do want to be aware of. Well, namely one. It's got a 30-day uh, storage uh, uh, threshold for it. So what that means is if we download a patch on the first of the month, by the 30th, if that patch has not been called except for on the first, it's going to delete itself. That being said, if we call the patch on the first, on the 28th, that patch is again called by a device because that patch has been approved and it needs to install. Say a remote device came back on your network and it picked up patching that day. Right, that will reset that 30 day counter. So, in that particular situation, the patch won't clean itself up within that patch cache until the 28th of the next month, restarting that 30 day cleanup cycle or threshold. Please note with this, we want to be able to make sure we have the amount of necessary space to store our patches within that cache. Now, in my example, you saw me use drive C on a server, not typically something that I would do in the real world because, well, drive C on my servers is typically a small boot drive. I would put this on a D, an E, an F, a G, whatever other letter that we're storing more data on that has more open space. Because while the uh, cache is only going to be about 10 gig, about where we want to set it, right? we want to make sure we have enough space to maintain that 10 gig. Now, 10 gig is a bit of overkill. Let's be honest, you could really probably drop it down to two or three, but I'm always a little bit hesitant when doing something like that. I want to make sure I have adequate space for all of my devices to call that server for their patches rather than trying to call the site concentrator failing and then going and reaching out to the web to download. That's been today's tech track with a little used item inside the dashboard that can be quite nice, especially within our resource starved environments. I'll look forward to talking to you next time. And again, my name's Joe Furla, Insight Head Nerd.